Dr. Carmen McGinnis here. Sometimes it's one client, one client that shows you some little secret thing about the psyche that was completely invisible to you before. Today we're going to talk about that one client. With her permission, Joanna is going to share with you how she stayed stuck on one guy for nearly four years. Joanna for about seven, eight months. And at first we were very stuck. And she had been stuck at that point for uh, over three years, slightly over three years. She had been with a gentleman who um, she had fallen in love with, and I believe he probably had fallen in love with her too. And it ended rather badly when he said that he just needed to go find himself. And he broke it off rather suddenly. They shared a home together that was rented. Um, money wasn't so much of an issue for her because she was well employed. Um, she was a, a, a teacher, a professor, actually. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about what Joanna and I discovered together through my work with her and her work with me. So the first thing that we discovered was that when you... <clears throat> When you love someone and you lose them and you feel that you have no control over it and you're angry about it, your anger is certainly justified. But if you keep that anger alive and on board long enough as part of the grieving process, which is, it is a normal part of the grieving process, I want to make that clear. But if you keep it on board too long, Keep it in the forefront of your consciousness for too long. It can turn to hate. And that is indeed what happened to Joanna. Joanna came to actually hate Tom, who she had previously loved. And I don't mean to sound make her, make her sound like a mean person. Joanna's a lovely, a lovely lady, um, kind and, and sharing and giving and perfectly happy to have me share this here with you today. Obviously her, her name has been changed for this content. But she grew to hate Tom. There was too much love, and these are her words, to get rid of it with any sort of logic. That's what she said to me during a session. And that's when things really started to turn for me. And I realized that she actually created the anger Fair enough, he left her, no reason why, um, and as I said, a normal part of grieving. But it grew into hate, and hate is a kind of an attachment, just as love is. And once we have that attachment, we're stuck, we're trapped. And for Joanna, she turned one kind of attachment, love, into another kind of attachment, hate and remained trapped in a relationship with Tom after, well after he was long gone. So the trick to this, as we worked through it, is to allow anger, but not hate. It was only when the hate began to subside through our work and our understanding of the dynamic that was actually happening that Joanna was able to free herself from that trap. Now, when we first started to work on releasing the hate, um, it was it, it actually served to make her hate him more because when she realized what she had done to herself, she felt very trapped, which she was, and the hate tended to grow for a little while. But it was through that logic of really thinking it through and thinking, I can stay trapped here forever or I can move on if I set down this hate and hold on to the anger, fair enough, and move on. And we're going to talk a little bit right at the end of, of my talk today about how to manage it, what it might mean at least, when you 
aren't willing to let go of these kinds of emotions, when you actually choose to stay trapped, which was not Joanna's case, by the way. So the, the other thing that we noticed was a sort of a joy to sorrow dynamic. First we have the love to hate dynamic with anger in between, and then we have the, the joy to sorrow dynamic. So Joanna was happy before when she was with Tom, so she convinced herself that she had to stay sad, sorrowful, to show herself how injured she was by him so that she could keep that hate alive. And the trick here is to find happiness in other things, which actually happened to Joanna quite by accident during our work together. She found something else, not a person, not an individual, but a hobby. Um, I don't want to say too much. I, I have to protect identities here, but she found a particular hobby that made her happy. So she was able to find happiness in her life and set down that sadness once she realized, we realized together, that the sadness was being used as a way to convince herself that she should continue to be sorrowful because before she was sad and holding that sorrow in place kept her angry and hating Tom. So, um, so in this way we don't have to set aside joy when we let go of something that makes us happy, but rather find joy in something else. And I, I feel strongly, having been through this process now with a few other people, a few other clients, that it's important to act quickly in this regard, to find something that makes you happy, keeps you happy, outside of the memories of, and re of that relationship. So the third dynamic was safety to insecurity, um, or even fearfulness. And what Joanna convinced herself of was that she, she was safe with Tom when they were together, so she must be unsafe without him. And certainly uh, we can see where money would be a concern in any breakup. They had been together for some time. They had rented a home that was outside of her means, and she was stuck in um, a lease in that home. She was frozen with fear about money, and instead of taking action to remedy the challenges, she just stayed frozen in fear. She held on to that almost like a shield to keep her in that fearful place, again, to keep her unhappy, and again, to keep her angry and hating Tom. So simple things in her case, like teaching an extra class at the university and canceling Tom's country club and gym memberships, which were on her credit cards, remedied the problem entirely. We also discussed the possibility of her taking a border, but the nature of her personality was such that she really did not want a border in her home. So I can't stress enough the importance of focus in turning these negative emotions completely on their heads and tricking ourselves into remaining happy, safe, and open to love. Ruthless focus is what I'm talking about. Every time you feel anger, move toward hate, find something to be happy about. Every time you feel sad, find something that bolsters your joy. Look for the small things. Nature, for me, is one of the best medicine cabinets. The sky, the sound of a bird chirping. I'm very fortunate to live in a garden, as you can see behind me. Um, if you live near the sea, the sound of the water playing against the sand or the seawall. Neighborhood sights and sounds also light up my day, as long as I'm not recording when I hear them. And smells are cathartic, too. A child playing in a puddle, lawnmowers in the distance, the smell of freshly mown grass, a barbecue. And every time you feel fearful about being alone, embrace yourself and know that you are never alone as long as you securely have yourself, as long as you know and hold yourself in your own arms, you will never be alone. Teach yourself to do the things you thought only he or she could do. In Joanna's case, she taught herself to be a pro barbecuer. Then she threw a poolside party to prove it. If after all of this, everything that we've talked about here, 
you find that you're still stuck, perhaps it's time to ask yourself, what does this mean about me? Why do I stay stuck? If so, is it my inner child making the decisions, deciding what's best in this case? And for those of you who are regular subscribers, you know that I've recently released a book called Raising Your Inner Child, and I'm about to release uh, an online course uh, of that same title. Children, in almost all cases, are safer with their not very good parents than without them. In almost every case, I would say that that is true. Do you believe that you're better off in a bad situation now that you're an adult? with your adult romantic partner then you would be alone? If so, it might be that you need to do that inner child work. So that's what I have for you today. I hope this has been helpful and I do offer my sincere gratitude to Joanna for Joanna of another name for letting us share this content today and I wish all of you the very best. I look forward to seeing you during my midweek sneak peek this Wednesday, and I will see you very soon. Take care. Have a wonderful week.